Hey guys, what's up? So, last time, or last time I was out, I don't know what time frame it is that you're seeing this, um, I shot, for the first time, my P320. Um, it did not have a threaded barrel on it, but it was just a standard, it's got dumped in the snow, standard P320, but today, we have an M17, right? So we have the full size, I believe is what it is, P320, but the M17, the civilian version, so it has a couple different differences than the military one. But we're just going to shoot it. Um, I got it for different reasons. We're going to shoot it. We're going to check it out, um, see kind of how it compares, and shoot the compact P320 suppressed. So let's get into it. All right, so first off, let's refresh our memory, right? Um, this is the P320. This is the compact, I believe. So it has the shorter frames, basically a Glock 19, right? Shorter frame, shorter slide. But now we have a threaded barrel and I went ahead and put on the Griffin Armament cam lock. Huge fan of that, huge fan of that. All right, so we got 15 rounds in here. I'm just gonna shoot it to target. I'm just feeling function, feeling the gun, seeing how it works. And then we'll go straight into the M17 and see if we can tell a difference with slide weights and all that jazz and whatnot and stuff. So we are recording. We do have audio. Yes, we do. Somebody's trying to call me, timer. And let's shoot some. Oop. Yes, I do flinch, there you go. So for whatever reason, this is a SIG magazine. We had a light primer strike right there, see that? Light primer strike. Okay, could be Sig, could be Tula. All right, now she held open. Okay, so there you go, interesting little thing. All right, so yeah, so for whatever reason, he decided not to, not to function, but that's okay. Um, I don't know what that was, the light primer strike, it seemed to be fine. Um, Maybe my eyes are deceiving me, but this looks like the barrel is sitting lower than it's supposed to be. I don't know, that looks kind of different. Not sure. I don't remember being that way before. I feel like it was more flush. Do you see how that sits down in there? If we look at the M17, that's yeah, the same thing. So the M17, it sits down in there. So that's just my imagination. All right, so the M17. I'm not gonna be a historian, attempt to be a historian. There's plenty of other videos and YouTubers and people and stuff like that out there. Um, so just the basics of this gun, right? That set it aside from the other gun. Longer slide, slightly longer grips. So this takes 17 round mags, the other takes 15 round mags. Takedowns are all the exact same. Most of that stuff's the exact same. Um, this guy does have an ambidextrous safety, right? So he's got a safety. Um, and then ambidextrous everything else. Um, I got this <clears throat> because I do like military firearms, right? Um, I do like that, I need to stop saying, um, drives me nuts. But I do like military style firearms, so this does have the designation M17. It is on the serial number and everything as well. Doesn't really mean a whole lot because these are just a bunch of them out there. It doesn't really mean anything special. The special ones, from my understanding, have a, a tougher, or not a tougher, but a stronger spring, right? The recoil spring. They don't have lighting, lightening, lightning cuts on the inside of, this, of the slide to lighten it up. They don't have that, the real ones. <clears throat> and then they have different colored controls. That's my understanding of the main differences, like in a nutshell. So this guy does have some material removed on the inside of the slide to lighten it up, right? I think it has a lighter recoil spring. And my understanding that I've gleaned off of the internet is basically that is because the military uses, I think it's 124 grain, um, nine millimeter rounds, which are hot. I've shot those things before, they're hot, right? They're, they're whizzing, full power loads, right? The civilian market doesn't always shoot that. We shoot Tula, we shoot all this other stuff that is less powered. So in, instead of having a bunch of people calling and complaining about their SIGs not working, I think that's why SIG went ahead and with the civilian versions, just tuned them up a little bit to run with more range of ammo. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Makes sense to me. All right, <clears throat> let's go ahead. These have 17 rounds. This will be my first time shooting this particular one with the longer slide. So let's see if it works. Let's see if it likes this Tula stuff. I have no idea, but we'll see. All right, and safety's off. Here we go. All right, 
So it cycled perfectly fine, didn't have any issues there. Um, I did notice these are night sights that come on this guy, so they do glow and all that kind of stuff. The other one did not come with night sights. I feel like I was able to hit easier with the other pistol, which doesn't make any sense because this has a longer sight radius, so all those things go out the window. Um, interesting, I don't know, and as far as feeling it, I don't know it, if it shoots much any softer or not. Right off the bat, I'd say they feel very, very, very similar. Um, one thing I do know, and I noticed this just dry firing and fiddling with the gun, I don't like the safety because the way that I hold the gun, it eats into, into the palm of my hand. If I go over this way, you can see it. It eats into the palm of my hand, and so it doesn't feel natural. I'm used, to, I'm used to trying to get up real high, and usually I hit the slide stop, slide release, um, and thankfully with these guys, I don't really have that problem. They, they took care of that, but with this manual safety, if it's on safe and I go to push the gun out and take the safety off, I'm pushing against my the, the meat of my hand right here. Kind of weird. I don't know. That could be, could be an issue. Not really. All right. Let's go ahead and suppress the other guy. And let's just shoot these things a little bit. All right. And since we're suppressing it, I figure it's only fair that we shoot subsonic. Um, this is Wolf or Tula. Tula. This is Tula subsonic stuff. 145 grain, I believe. Um, it's right there on the edge. I haven't chronographed it, but it is not the same as a lot of your, uh, uh, as a lot of your nice subsonics. We'll put it that way. They, a lot of them do remain subsonic, but then a lot of them, they're right there on the edge. So they get a little snappy. They get a little bit loud. So I wouldn't be surprised if we hear some cracking and stuff like that. And it's not the quietest thing in the world because we're not using super quality ammo. It works. does what it's supposed to do. All right, first off, let's go with the Omega 9K. I have to say, this is one of my favorite absolute all-time 9mm suppressors. It just, it's a workhorse. It really, really does well. I need to make another update video on this guy. It does a fantastic job at what it's supposed to do. All right, so <clears throat> here we go. Same thing we were doing earlier. Let me step back a little bit so you can see the, uh, see the gun do its thing, right? You don't want to watch me. Here we go. That sounds pretty quiet. Oh yeah, that's quiet. And there we go. All right. That actually is very pleasant. Um, that actually is very pleasant. I tell you what, that Omega 9K does a fantastic job, but one thing it is kind of annoying is it sticks up pretty high, right? So you cannot see sights. And we all know that suppressed pistols, generally, you're not gonna see your sights unless, or use your, be able to clear, be able to easily use your sights. You can superimpose them, which is what I was trying to do. And it was working most of the time, sometimes, not really most of the time, but sometimes it was working. Um, let's take this guy off, all right? I'm sure he's good. Let's throw on the Odessa, right? So the Odessa kind of cures that problem, right, of being a uh, of being too big, too round, right? So you should, and I can, I can just see, and you can't ever tell in the pictures and things. I can just see over the suppressor, so I should be able to use my actual sights. So let's look at that real quick. I'm gonna load up some more subs, and let's try it. All right, so here we go. Shoot some subs, make sure this guy's on. I'm gonna, okay, I already started saying it, so I'm gonna say it. Um, this cam lock is amazing, right? There have been some times, I did a 500 round, not a burn down per se, but pretty much a burn down, and at the end, it had loosened up a little bit. So at the end of taking that guy off, he felt a little bit loose coming off. Never had that problem until now and i've shot a lot so i don't know if these things have a lifespan that they're supposed to i don't know what you're supposed to do but it's on there tight right now so we'll see if it loosens up at all at the end well there we go lost around all right so now i can see through my sights like this right yeah scoot back a little bit because that's a bigger suppressor here we go nope didn't like that didn't eject
All right. So he worked fine. Here's that live round that we ejected in the beginning. Nice and cold. Oops. There we go. There we go. So that actually worked pretty good. And as far as subsonic stuff, those those rounds did actually sound really good. Um, let's see if the suppressor got hot. Got a little snug, a little warm. Yep, and see, and he's a little bit loose now. He. So I don't know what it is about that. I don't know if these things have a lifespan um, that they just don't like. This is a brand new um, male adapter, right, on the barrel. I don't know why it's starting to come loose. So that could be something to consider. I don't know, because I'm heavily invested in these things now, because I have a bunch of them. But I don't know, it's interesting. I don't know why I'd be backing off a little bit. All right, so now let's do some more side-by-side -side kind of stuff. Um, yeah, this is regular 115 grain. Let's do like five shots and then quickly transition to the M17 and see if we can really feel a difference with the slide, with any of that stuff. I don't know, let's just see. Doesn't seem to feel a whole lot different. I mean, even shooting in one hand, let's see. I can't hit anything. There we go. Just didn't want to hit. I'll try this guy. I don't know. It could, it, there could be an argument made that this is just ever so slightly less snappy, but it'd be ever so slightly. They, to me personally, they feel the same, right? But then also you're digging into your hand. You can see where it's maybe, I don't know, poor me, right? It's digging into my hand. That's that safety. So I don't know. That safety is, it's there for a reason, but I don't particularly like it. I do like the gun though. Um, and we do, hopefully we'll put on a some kind of sighting thing and just run with it and we'll see how we like it. I don't know. I think it's cool. I think it's cool. All right, so let's try the suppressor one more time. We'll just shoot some uh, some go-go juice in there. Um, really what that does, just lowers the decibels a little bit. And these, it's a bad time to do this because these are the supersonic regular ammo. I just want to see if this guy's going to come loose. Really just want to see if he comes loose again. All right, regular, regular 115's wet can. See, and it gets really smoky and dirty. It'll dirty up your gun bad. Nope, and he didn't come off, so he's fine. Do the same thing with the, uh, this guy. Let's do the same thing with the, uh, with the Odessa. So, put a little lube in there. It's still just a little bit warm and really give it a nice snug, snugness. It's a word. Now, didn't cycle. Really spitting stuff back in my face and I put my glasses on. Um, but did he come loose? Mm, maybe a little bit. And this was the suppressor I was using when it did come loose. So I don't know if the internal threads or whatever in there are what's coming loose. I have no idea. No idea. All right, guys. So that was a quick, quick little, not even an overview review. I didn't really tell you a whole lot about this gun that you probably didn't already know. Um, but just getting my hands on it, just kind of getting a feel for it. I really don't know what's going on with the accuracy, um, aside from the fact that I can't shoot very well, um, or at least not with this gun. I don't know, that other, the 320, the regular, the compact 320, that is easy. It is easy to hit. I'm shooting at like 25 yards or whatever. I, I don't know exactly, but I think it's like 25 yards, and it's just easy to hit. For whatever reason, whenever I try to shoot, here we go, try to shoot this guy, there we go, now we hit it. No, we didn't. 
There we go. Maybe it's just taking getting used to. Um, it's definitely one of those guns. This is not like a Glock. I'm used to shooting Glocks where you line up your sights, right? You take your target and you set it right on top of the front sight. This is not that way. You won't hit what you're shooting at if you do that. These basically cover up your sight or cover up your target. Your sights cover up your target, which is kind of different. I'm not really used to that. That could be, yeah, maybe that's the problem. That could be part of the problem is I'm really just, I'm not used to that. Um, could be part of the problem. But again, that's why I want to put a red dot on here because red dots are red dots. You sight it in whatever you want to have it sighted in and you just shoot your guns. I don't know. Just makes sense to me. There we go. So anyway, guys, that was a quick little down and dirty of the M17. My first thoughts and impressions are I don't like the safety. Um, safety is either going to have to go or something's going to have to happen because that's just annoying as all get out. If I try to reach more forward on the gun, it's still there on the very back the very back meaty portion of my hand. So I don't know, I don't know, I really don't know what I'm supposed to be doing different on there. Don't like it. Um, take away that, take away the, um, well, let's just swap slides. Mid exit outro, let's just swap slides. Here we go, so that's more like it. Well, here we go. Well, that takes care of the whole problem right there. So longer slide, slide cut, all the fancy stuff you want with that, and no big old safety on the side to get in your way. I actually like that. So there you go. That's my thoughts on there. Um, anyway, we're going to keep shooting these. Um, probably not a whole lot more today. Um, I just have time restraints and stuff I got to do. Um, but we're going to keep shooting it. We're going to give it a run for its money, right? We're going to do stuff with it. And I still am waiting on half of y'all guess what I'm looking for. I'm trying, trying to get uh, one of those Flux Raiders. That's what we're trying to do. Um, I have literally missed it by seconds the last two times they dropped. I mean, I was done checking out within about 30 seconds of them launch, of them releasing it again. And I was already out. So one of these times, hopefully, we'll get one of those Raiders. And that is where the short little slide is going to go. Um, this guy could potentially be something that I would carry. I don't know, because I have no qualms about having a longer slide. It's the shorter piece right here. And up here, a lot of times, you've got jackets and whatnot and stuff. So you can get away with a little bit of, you know, printing. Because it looks just more like lumps of fat under your skin, you know. Um... So that's not that big of a deal. And I don't know. I don't know. It's just stuff we're going to play around with. All right. I'm going to shut up now. Um, again, if any of you guys have experience with the M17s, right, um, y'all did a fantastic job. I was wondering why so many people were commenting on the other videos because I asked you a question. It's like, wow, I should do that more often. Um, but if any of you guys have the M17, do you notice um, that stupid safety being in the way and hitting you on the back of your hand? or not hitting you, but just grinding into your hand when, you, when you're gripping that gun. Is that an issue for you, or am I just weird and I hold the gun strange? Because I didn't think I held the gun strange, but maybe I am. So I don't know. I'd like to hear, you, hear from you guys on that. If any of you guys have, whether it be an M17 or just a safety-enabled, um, whatever you want to call it, P320, let me know. Did you delete those? Because I know that you can do that relatively easy. So did you guys delete those, or did you leave it on there just work around it? Training issues? What's the deal? I don't know. Looking forward to hearing from you guys. All right. Y'all be good to be safe. Appreciate you watching, subscribing, and everything. And hopefully, hopefully, catch you next video.